well, on a short walk just to take you through some of the exhibitions that are being conducted here today to give you, well, a sort of look at what exactly is happening. We'll start off at the FPIC standard, of course, is the Fresh Produce Exporters Association of Kenya. Of course, you can see uh, quite a bit going on here in terms of uh, be it the exhibitions of vegetables, uh, be it the exhibitions of uh, booklets, the various things that stakeholders along the value chain uh, need and can get in order to assist them in terms of, well, business or any position along the value chain. We want to get a sense of what exactly is going on here today and talk to some of the exhibitors. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, please tell us your name and what exactly you're doing here today. My name is Boniface Mulandi. Yes. I work for Fresh Produce Exporters Association of Kenya. The Fresh Produce Exporters Association of Kenya is a membership organization which brings together growers and exporters of fresh fruits, vegetables. It also uh, supports its members through trainings, capacity building, market information, and also um, assisting in issues of market market requirements, food safety issues, and all that, yes. Yeah, so what exactly are you doing here today? How is, does this fit into your mandate? Uh, the, the, today, we, we're just showcasing what our members do export, the nature of packaging, what the presentation, the different packaging, the different um, presentations in, in, in what we do export. Mm -hmm. uh, that is what we're showing uh, uh, the people who are coming around. Yes. Yes. I can see various uh, vegetables, I can see baby corn, I can see snow peas, I can see peas, I can see uh, mango slices, I can see very many other things including carrots and other vegetables. What are the various markets for these goods? Uh, the, the markets are, 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 are wide. Uh, we have majorly, our major market is in, the, is in Europe and we have a uh, good market for our products in Middle East as well. And also our, 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 our neighbors. Yeah, we do export a lot of fruits, talk of mangoes, talk of, um, uh, talk of t oranges. We do do business with our, with our regional, regional uh, neighbors. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much uh, there, sir. Well, indeed, just to mention that later on, we will be talking to the CEO of that organization. His name is Jose Machuca, and we'll, of course, uh, be looking at what exactly that organization's mandate is, how they have been working to sort of fulfill that and how exactly they fit into the entire value chain for farmers and assisting them achieve, well, their business goals. Well, we now want to move on and uh, this time uh, walk to the SGS Kenya stand and uh, this, of course, a retesting and calibration company, among other things. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, please just tell us your name and what exactly the company does and what it's doing here today. My name is Cyprian Kabis. Um, I work for SGS. Um, briefly, SGS is uh, one of the international companies. Um, we've been in Kenya for over 50 years now, and uh, we're basically in the field of verification, testing, and uh, certification. Um, in the field of uh, foods, we do a lot of testing. We have our labs uh, in Mombasa, and uh, our labs uh, uh, are accredited to ISO 17025. Um, in the export arena, we've been involved in the testing of pesticide residues, and uh, uh, I think in the Eastern Central Africa, it's probably the only unique lab that is approved by the EU to carry the residue analysis. Um, so there's a quite a lot that we do in the agricultural sector, including uh, soil analysis, we do precision agriculture, um, fertility mapping um, and all the testings that you find along the food value chain. Yes. Uh, for a farmer who's uh, listening to us from uh, the comfort of his living room across the country and he may be wondering how uh, this company fits into uh, the value chain and can be able to first help him uh, turn to farming as a business, move from subsistence to actually making money off his land and some maybe value addition along the chain. How can you help farmers uh, as, uh, for these aspirations? Yes, we, we do have uh, tailor-made training for, for farmers. Um, usually, traditionally, we have focused on very large uh, farmers and uh, uh, large structures. But yes, we have recognized the importance of the SMEs and there are specialized needs that uh, these people have. So as SGS, uh, we are moving into that uh, direction and we have tailor-made services, tailor-made uh, training um, uh, you know, uh, programs that we have to help the small farmers come up 
to understand what is really required uh, within the value chain in order to produce a quality product. Indeed, thank you very much, sir, for your time. Well, of course, that uh, there being the SGS Kenya stand, the company is in calibration, uh, testing, verification, uh, various aspects of the value chain that enable farmers first be able to uh, apply quality standards that then enable them to access global value chains. And of course, the perspective here being that farmers who, of course, have been listening to us can then start to approach the company for various solutions that enable them get that much more out of the work they do with the land. Well, we move on now and uh, this time go to the Agriculture and Food Authority stand that, of course, is the FAO. This, of course, is a body mandated to be able to handle the entire agriculture value chain across the country. Uh, please stand up. Uh, good afternoon. Please tell us your name and uh, what exactly FAO is doing here today. My name is Caroline Omkuba and uh, Horticultural Crops Directorate. Our mother what is AFA. Yes. So we are here trying to explain to her. She wants to become an exporter. Yeah, so I'm trying to explain to her. What would you say to such a person who wants to become an exporter? Uh, being an exporter is good, especially in the horticulture industry. Yeah, yeah and she wants to deal in fruits and uh, mangoes and avocados, which is a good thing. I've actually told her to go to our website. She'll, go, she'll get there all our requirements and she'll come for vetting once she's ready. Yes. Madam, just take a step forward. Eh? Please start by telling me your name. Oh, my name is Carol. Yes. yes. Now, do you know that the price of uh, a premium avocado, triple A, is 700 shillings in some of the agriculture uh, markets in the EU and, uh, and in the Americas? Oh, I was not aware of that yes. fact, yes. but it's good you pointed it out. Yes. And uh, uh, I will look into it since we have a market channel in the Middle East. Yes. So talk to us about uh, what exactly you do. Uh, are you a smallholder? Are you a large company? Are you a farmer? Where exactly along the value chain do you fall? Okay, um, uh, we are a trader. Yes. Um, my company is called Somihel Group Limited. Mm -hmm. It's in partnership between uh, Same Investments mm -hmm. and Solico uh, Group based in Iran. So by virtue of that fact, uh, we have uh, market channels in the Middle East, JCC, ASEAN markets, yes, and so um, working backwards now uh, because uh, you have to be compliant, have your license, uh, so that you become an exporter and at the end of the day we want to uh, promote our country in terms of uh, uh, foreign exchange earnings. Yeah. Uh, what's the what has it been like? Because for a lot of young people, they keep saying these things are challenging, there are no opportunities, that sort of thing. Where did you start off? And uh, have you been able to get adequate support from all these bodies like we can see here today? Yes, they are very helpful. The government is very helpful. And uh, at least they know that uh, supporting people like us, uh, we are able to move the country forward in terms of even exchange earnings, because this is money we are bringing into the country. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the average price of an avocado in the American market is two dollars ninety-nine cents for each. That's about two hundred and ninety-nine shillings uh, for each. Uh, the average price of an avocado on the tree in Nyandarwa is one shilling, right? In November, we are supposed to start direct flights to the U.S. Do you think there's an opportunity uh, to develop that value chain and for people to make money? Yes, there's an opportunity. Uh, we have very good climate. We have very good crop. So uh, we can leverage on that fact. And, yeah, so competition is uh, welcome. So when we get that uh, direct flight, it will become easier for people like us to go there and promote our avocados. Yeah. Thank you very much, madam, for your time. Well, we, of course, that is from the horse's mouth. She is a trader, a person in that value chain, and one of the people who uh, literally, for whom the taste of the pudding has been in the eating in terms of trying to access foreign markets for products that are agriculture-based and value addition along that entire line. Well, we want to continue with our work uh, for just uh, two more stands to be able to take you through what exactly is happening here today. And we are now at the Society for uh, crop agribusiness advisors of Kenya. Uh, their acronym is SOCA. And well, they're in agribusiness advisory and consultancy. Thank you very much sir, for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, please start by telling us your name and uh, what exactly you're doing here today. Okay, my name is Nicholas Kahiga. I'm the vice chair of SOCA, which is the Society of Crop 
Agribusiness Advisors of Kenya. We are here today to be part of this great team uh, talking about food safety. You know, food safety would not be mentioned where advisory doesn't come in because us as advisors of primary producers, we are the ones who take them through the whole value chain and uh, looking at the areas where food can be contaminated, either uh, biological contamination, chemical contamination, and especially the whole chain of uh, transportation up to the end user. And that's why we're here. Yeah. Uh, when you uh, mentioned that the first thing that of course comes to many Kenyans' minds is cholera yeah. and the Nairobi situation and across the other parts of the country, yeah. where did the rain start beating us? What do we do to rein in on that? Okay, I think generally the rain started uh, beating us when we didn't care much of where the food that I'm uh, taking came from. I know it's a, bif a very difficult task, but it is important to note that we have all the registration, we have all the acts of uh, government that uh, take care of uh, our food, but the implementation bit is not there. Long time ago, we used to have markets that are segregated. We had wholesale markets, we had retail markets. But now we see that from the farmer, uh, you find that that product can end up uh, getting to a roadside market. A roadside market that is not regulated in terms of facilities, in terms of hygiene facilities and all that. The other thing is on how we transport our, our, our product from the primary producer. We still believe that if the farmer used uh, good water out there, the point of contamination might not be there, mm -hmm. but the next point of contam contamination will come on how you clean that produce, how you load it to head to whatever de uh, destination that you want to take it. Mm -hmm. And we have identified several areas. One, Nairobi has a, a twin problem that you also have an issue of uh, the urban agriculture, mm -hmm. and you know how our rivers flowing through Nairobi are. If it is an irrigated crop and most vegetables are there, then it will be definitely or 99% chances that it was irrigated with contaminated, uh, contaminated uh, water. The other thing is storage. Uh, and I think uh, vegetables and fruits are perishables. So if you are going to get them in the wrong way in terms of transportation, and then the storage that we see in Wakulima market and all is not the best, then the, the chances of that food picking bacteria on other harmful organisms is very high. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about food hunting, because then that is the last part of the value chain before it ends up on uh, the uh, on the plate at the fork. Uh, for some people, we also feel that uh, maybe some parts of the value chain have been compromised in terms of assessing the standards of health of players, uh, waiters, uh, chefs, that sort of thing. Could this be the case uh, that is compounding this situation? Yeah, it is. And uh, one of the other things that happens is that you find that... Uh, as I said before, it doesn't, that it doesn't mean that we don't have laws that uh, uh, manage that, but it's how we enforce it. And I've just given an example of uh, how the municipal markets are supposed to be. But I think at the moment, if you look at the wholesale markets have not been turned to retail markets. So the control there becomes a big challenge. And then the next thing that uh, uh, happens is when it comes to the public health part of it. And what you find is that in Kenya, we don't have one body dealing with the whole issue of food safety. So we have segregated uh, outfits dealing with the food safety issue. And this is what the, the, the government and the government officers will always refer as a, as a, 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 a group responsibility. But we don't have one single entity dealing with the food safety, like the way we have the National Road Safety Authority of Kenya. And these, you, you find that every time we have an issue of uh, like cholera, people will start uh, backpassing in terms of do we know whether this contamination was done at the point of uh, production, the point of transport, or the point of uh, marketing, or the point of final handling, up to a point it gets to the hotel. Yeah. Indeed, uh, sir. Thank you very much for your time. A topic that uh, is uh, very important for us and one that we'll keep uh, coming back to. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you for visiting our start. Thank you. Yeah. Well, indeed, that, of course, is uh, the conversation around food standards, safety in handling, and, of course, uh, challenges that uh, cities like Nairobi are facing in terms of food safety, cholera, and things like that. Well, we now want to ch uh, change tack a little bit. Did you know that... Uh, well, Kenyan has won the African Food Prize. Uh, that happened last week in Abidjan. And in the next